Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Uh, welcome students uh, of MED 4106. Today uh, we're we'll going to discuss with all of you regarding uh, epidemiology of communicable disease, eh? CDC or infectious disease, specifically in Malaysia. So this is the main three main learning outcomes for this um, uh, lecture discussion. First, we would like to see what is the burden of disease, eh? burden or magnitude of the problem of infectious disease in Malaysia. Uh, and then we will focus on what are the prevention and control strategies. Okay, I put here prevention and control. These two terms are slightly different. We will discuss this uh, during our uh, lecture later on as well as some uh, some of the key points uh, about the laws and also guidelines related to CDC enforcement. Okay, these are the terms uh, that you need to be familiar with when you are dealing with communicable diseases, okay? Infections that transmit from one person to another. So the first, um, the first terminology that you will frequently encounter is actually incubation period. Okay, incubation period uh, is basically the time that you get the infection into your body until you develop the first symptom. So this, that is incubation period or IP. Okay, uh, I think you have heard of this a lot uh, during this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic regarding IP. Uh, so COVID-19, they say is around 14 days uh, on average, can be two days and can also be up to 27 days, right? Uh, next one is period of communicability. Okay, period of communicability is period, period of infectiousness is different from IP, okay, incubation period, because this is the time when uh, the infection uh, can trans be transmitted to another person okay so basically for example here uh, if let's say the IP is uh, around let's say eh, for example seven days okay during these seven days the period of communicability of the disease can be uh, for example two days before and two days after the IP okay for example Two days before the IP of seven days, so during the fifth day, and two days after, meaning to say at ninth, the ninth day, okay, after getting the infection. So this is the time where the person becomes very infectious. Okay, uh, infectivity is the proportion of exposure that results in infection. Okay, you can refer the term, this uh, terminology in the uh, dictionary of epidemiology. Okay, by Porter uh, International Epidemiological Association. Okay, all of this actually you can you can easily get it uh, online. Okay, uh, using the dictionary of epidemiology can be downloaded online. Okay, susceptibility uh, is basically the person, the person or the the being that is susceptible or easily get the infection. So how easy can you get the infection? So this is uh, this is related to Im immune system. Okay, pathogenicity. Pathogenicity is the ability, the ratio that uh, that one person can have the disease after getting the infection. Okay, this is a general term. Virulence is basically uh, the the ability of the organism to 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 produce clinical disease. Okay, for example, the virulent factor in COVID-19 is the spike proteins. Okay, so this is very uh, antigenic uh, level of uh, term that you need to know. Eh? Virulence is basically what is the weapon on the microorganism. Okay, uh, so in EPID, you cannot run away from epidemiological trial. Okay, basically you have uh, triad here, okay. Triad here means agent. Agent is the disease of interest. Eh? For example, here had A, had B, had C. What are the genotype, phenotype, the drug resistance of the organism? Host is the human being. Host here can be either human, 
can be animal. Okay, when you're talking about zoonotic diseases, okay, you have other terminologies, reservoir, incidental host, okay, the real host, okay, we will come to that discussion a bit later on, and also environment. Environment, what are the factors that is outside of the, the person that can influence the like disease? Eh? For example, here, when we talk about dengue, you talk a lot about temperature, humidity, uh, water, all right, so on and so forth. Okay, the chain of infection is basically uh, related to our earlier slides. Okay, basically, uh, what happens when you get the infectious agent? Okay, what happens? Uh, this is uh, a general chain that you will come, come across. Uh, usually, infectious agent will go into the reservoir. Reservoir here means that the person or the animal, for example, does not have a clinical disease but actually carry carry the infection with him and transmit transmit the infection through a portal of exit for example uh, the organism might for example snails okay? snails uh, we carry the the parasite okay uh, please uh, please do your own reading what are the uh, parasite that can be transmitted uh, by snails eh? so through the through uh, through the soil and then get transmitted into the portal of entry of the human being and the human being becomes the susceptible hole. For example, if you are talking about feces uh, drop uh, droppings of the animal, uh, you will get the disease when you uh, does you do not uh, you do not observe the hygiene of your of yourself. Therefore, the fecal oral transmission is the mode of transmission for the infectious agent. Okay, so basically, these are this is basically a cycle. Okay, another term that you need to uh, understand is the natural history. Natural history is when uh, is is the term when the stages of disease comes into play and very important because it is related the stage here. Okay, is related to the level of prevention. Every stage of the his, the disease history, you have a, a opportunity for you to prevent the infection. Okay, for example, susceptible stage of susceptibility here. You have healthy individuals like you and me right now. We can do simple things to prevent the disease. Okay, for example, in COVID nineteen, basically hand hygiene. Cover your uh, cover your face. Do not touch your face when you are not washing your hands. Okay, you can prevent this infection. Getting enough and nutritious food for you to boost your immune system. Okay, so you can prevent it at this stage. And what happens when you go into the next stage? Subclinical disease. Okay, uh, for example here, asymptomatic uh, infection of COVID nineteen. Okay. We all do not know actually who is actually getting the infection and asymptomatic, all right. So during this phase, the person either is truly asymptomatic or very mild disease, or the person is still in the incubation period. So therefore, if let's say that's why it's very important in COVID-19, you identify first who are the close contact because after you have identified the person is close contact. Then only you can do something to the person or the patient. Okay, but either you you ask them to quarantine, home isolation, so on and so forth. All right, you want to prevent a further, uh, you want to prevent or stop the chain of transmission. All right, and then after the symptom onset happen, you will get to the stage of clinical disease. So therefore, those who are having complication, respiratory depression, will be admitted and in Iso isolation ward, uh, isolation room, and get treated. All right. And of course, last but not least, if the stage of disease is very severe, then you can do some rehabilitation and disability limitation. All right. And also social support. So all of the stages have different ways for you to prevent the infection. Okay. Uh, epid. When we talk about epid. 
uh, uh, you will come across this in Dr. Hashima's lecture. You will come across what, when, where, who and how. You will need to answer all of this. What? What is the organism? Uh, okay. What is the organism? When does it happen? Where does it happen? Who gets infected? And how you want to prevent? Okay. So uh, for this uh, for this session, for this lecture, or for this uh, e-learning session, you will focus. Uh, we will focus on these key areas eh? according to our uh, Jabatan Kesihatan Negeri or State Health Department units. Okay. Basically, we have uh, food and waterborne disease, TB, leprosy, zoonotic diseases, vector-borne diseases and also vaccine preventable diseases okay these are the examples we will come to that later okay uh, typhoid fever okay typhoid typhoid uh, comes from uh, the infection of salmonella all right you have salmonella typhimurium salmonella enter enterica you have here a very rare variant of salmonella that happened in kedah baling uh, in not, not baling in uh, in Kupang Baling Kedah, all right. The name here is Salmonella enterica serova well tefreden. Okay, uh, a sero group or serova, uh, very rare, but it happened when uh, several people actually come to this uh, gerai or warung, ate the thing, and develop GI symptoms, and subsequently they report also death. All right, what happened here? what happened that leads to the death of these persons okay so they investigated uh, the area they close the area they do cleaning and do they do enforcement they check the steps of the way uh, what happened uh, what happened here they found out that the food poisoning is due to the uh, the laksa itself eh? the preparation as well as uh, the ingredient itself is contaminated with salmonella all right so that's what happened here. Uh, typhoid, eh? typhoid, according to Greek, is also called smoke or cloud. Uh, it, uh, when one gets the infection and because it is fecal oral route, it tends to uh, it tends to develop severe disease, eh? if, so severe that it even kill one third of the Athen population. Okay, during one of the one of the events in during that time and eh, then when they do when they did study they detected dna sequences similar to salmonella so that's what that's that's how they detected the salmonella infection so uh, according to us globally globally a uh, typhoid fever in us not much 400 cases uh, and it can also travel uh, be brought during traveling because of the food okay food carrying in the uh, air buses or uh, airplanes and also visiting uh, travelers visiting countries which is endemic of type of fever. Why is endemic? Endemic here means that uh, and uh, the level of infection is constant in the locality. Okay, for example, in Malaysia, okay, I'm, I'm going to the statistics in Malaysia, we can find that uh, the salmonella is the level of salmonella the incidence rate is slightly high in uh, Kelantan, Terengganu and Sabah. Okay, uh, not all of the areas, but some of the localities. Okay, so what contributes to this uh, in incidence? Okay, basically there are two points here: are food handlers, those who prepare the food, those who serve the food, so on and so forth, as well as foreign immigrants okay this one is actually related to um, the vaccination okay typhoid vaccination that is required uh, by the by the uh, food food unit eh? food unit of uh, PKD eh? Pejabat Kesihatan Daerah they require the food handlers to do uh, to get the typhoid vaccine if not they cannot work all right so this is by law under the food act yes okay so in the type uh, for example in food and waterborne disease these are the three main things that you need to uh, understand 
and also do. If you ever encounter a case of typhoid or food poisoning, whatever the organism is, you need to do situational analysis. You need to find out whether is the food outlet or the food that is being served is at risk of uh, at risk of outbreak. Okay, outbreak here means that more than the case, the more than uh, in, increase in more than the actual or the normal level of cases. Okay, for so you need to prevent the outbreak from happening first. So what you need to do, you you analyze the situation, look at the area, is it clean or not? Does the food handlers receiving jab or not? And you need to do HACCP. Okay, what is HACCP? Uh, the term here is uh, defined as hazard hazard analysis critical control point. Okay, hazard analysis critical control point. There are seven steps here. Number one, you need to analyze. Okay, do situation analysis of the hazards. What are the hazards? Is it is it related to the a chopping board, chopping board using the same chopping board to cut the vegetable, to cut the uh, meat. So there will be some element of cross contamination. Okay. So you need to to do number two. You need to do critical control point analysis. What is CCP? CCP is when you determine whether the fault. Okay. The the reason behind the outbreak is is it because the food is not cooked properly, okay? You have uncooked meat. Or is it because of the hygiene of the workers? Or is it because the workers does not receive typhoid vaccination? All right? So what are the the level of uh, level of uh, problem that that is most likely causing the outbreak? And then you need to uh, number 3 is establish the limits, okay? You need to establish a clear limit uh, of the food handler to comply, you need to give the time and also to give the uh, health promotion to the food handler. Uh, you need to follow cooking time. For example, cooking time you need to follow accordingly. You cannot you cannot deep fry a chicken uh, without properly ensuring that the chicken is properly cooked. All right. So and as well as serving time. For example, you cannot serve the you cannot leave the food more than 40 minutes, okay? If anything, more than, not 40 minutes, sorry, 4 hours. If you leave the food for more than 4 hours, then most likely the food will be contaminated, alright? If no reheating is done, uh, for example, alright? And then, uh, number 4 is, of course, monitoring. After you have established what is the problem, you do food health promotion, you need to monitor the uh, the action of the food handler. Okay, uh, after you you have closed uh, after the after the pejabat kesihatan have closed the area, closed the shop or closed the the warung, they need to do cleaning up. They need to take the typhoid vaccination. They need to do the corrective measures, and you need to verify whether it is following the HACCP system or not, and also of course recording. Okay. So in anything related to food and waterborne diseases, HACCP is very important because it is related to food safety. Eh? Okay, what are the laws and acts? Okay, this is very brief. I I don't expect you to uh, remember one by one the points, but the concept is the food and waterborne disease falls under the Food Act, eh? 1983. Under the Food Act, we have the regulation. Uh, food regulation, we have the hygiene regulation, and we also have the uh, food regulation in terms of the import and export. Okay, for example, in Pejabat Kesihatan Daerah Kuantan, we have the seaport, okay, pelabuhan. Uh, so, the pelabuhan, the inspector kesihatan or the uh, environmental, assistant environmental health officers, they are the responsible to check the food that is being imported and exported, whether it is safe to be marketed or not, whether it is clean or not, whether it comply with the standards or not. So we do frequent monitoring of the situation. We want to prevent outbreaks from happening. All right. So another one, another loss and act, of course, uh, this is the mother of all laws of CDC. It is the Prevention and Control of Infectious Disease Act 1988, okay, PCID Act.
Okay, something relating to leptospirosis. Uh, I think most of you have uh, exposed to this in your clinical uh, clinical ward rounds, okay, especially in medical. Uh, this is example of the outbreak that happened in Dubuyu, Maran, where uh, a person actually drowned. Eh? A person actually drowned in this uh, Aitijun uh, waterfall, and subsequently, this person is being rescued, uh, being searched, and and searched by the uh, um, by the firefighters as well as the villagers. They try to find the victim of the drowning, but somehow after they are doing uh, after they did the search and rescue try to rescue, uh, they fall ill, okay? They develop fever, some of them admitted to ICU, some of them develop jaundice, and they found out that the, these persons, eh, these persons are infected with leptospirosis eh, because of the, the hygiene or the uh, the area environment is not so clean. Eh? There are a lot of dirty bottles, uh, empty cans, empty food packets in the area of the waterfall, right? So they closed the area and they did the cleaning up and subsequently they detected the leptospirosis. So leptospirosis is basically a zoonotic disease. It is brought by uh, not just rodents, eh? not just rat, rats, but also other animals. All right? there, are, there are a lot of uh, serovars eh? of uh, leptospirosis, but the most severe is heterohemorrhagy okay? here that can cause whales. All right? Wales disease, right? I think you have heard of this, right? Wales disease. Okay, so because of the the wide nature of lepto, eh, you have leptospira interrogans, leptospira hebdomonis, not all causes severe disease and not all causing uh, severe symptoms. Okay, some of them, some of us even if we test our, our serology, if we test our blood, uh, who uh, most likely that we are also have the infection within us, but we do not present with severe disease. Eh? Uh, in this natural reservoir, as I mentioned earlier, not just rodents, but also cattle, pigs, and canine. All right. So this is why this is a very important public health uh, infection that we need to control. Eh? So epidemiology only one case per hundred thousand population, but uh, in temperate climates, for example, in Malaysia, in Philippines, where we have the monsoon seasons, the rate, uh, incidence rate, tend to increase to what uh, from one becomes ten per thousand, pop, uh, hundred thousand population, right? So they did a study. This is a quite a not a recent study. They found out that in Malaysia, the incidence is actually. Um, increasing uh, over the years uh, two things one is because of the uh, one is because of the surveillance eh? the, the detection is much better now because during 2000 at, in 2010 only they they make it uh, they make it they make it as one of the infection that need to be notified administratively administratively in the CDC in the notification form. So uh, you you can see here that the notification of the infection in increases, uh, but also the number the worrying part is actually the death. Eh? The death here is actually almost uh, I think almost reported here uh, around fifty percent that you can see that the infection uh, because of detecting late the infection tends to make the person infected die. Eh? Because most of the infection is asymptomatic, so it is not being captured here. It's not being tested. So those who are who are being tested usually present late. When they present late, uh, they tend to die. But uh, of course, eh, I think the recent data, if you can get the recent data, the data uh, of leptospirosis is not too bad. All right, lepto. If you detect early, if you get the history properly, then you can prevent because it can be treated by broad spectrum antibiotics, eh? the cephalosporin, you can treat the leptospirosis, right? Okay, in Malaysia and Paham, uh, Malaysia and Philippines, sorry, uh, the trend is uh, almost the same eh, during the years, eh, over the years. Eh? You can see the upcoming upcoming number of cases at the end of the year, all right, 
at the end of the year, you can see the, uh, the surge in the cases. This is because of the, as I mentioned earlier, we have the monsoon season. When monsoon season happens, the urine, the urine, the infected urine of the rats and also the animals gets into the water and gets into the gets uh, exposed to the human beings and causing clinical disease. All right. Uh, similarly, lepto epid fire. I think you can do this practice on your own. The agent host environment as well as we have another component very important is vector. Okay, vector is the animal that is that. That, that is bringing the infection here. Uh, the example here is actually the rodents. All right. Okay. The natural history here, just something to highlight. Incubation period is around two to twenty days. Uh, leptospirosis can be found in blood during the first week, eh, acute stage. Okay. Uh, but after the second week, I think day ten onwards, you can find the infection actually inside the urine. Okay, so therefore, it is very important for you to determine what test or what um, what sample to take. Is it urine sample? Is it blood sample? All right. So if you work uh, if you work in hospital later on, or you do your clinical rounds, you need to determine when does this person actually have the risk factor. For example, the risk factor is. Uh, uh, taking a uh, uh, spending time in in waterfall okay so you need to count uh, the day the first the day that they, he or she went to the waterfall and and also the symptom so therefore you can calculate uh, what type of uh, what type of sample that you need to take is it blood if it is within first week you need to take blood and also some some also take CSF based on the clinical if they present with some neurological sequelae but 10 days onwards usually you can you you cannot find the leptospi uh, lepto leptospire pathogen inside the blood you need to take the urine okay you can send for uh, we can send for the cultures eh? but for antibody titers uh you, it is according to the uh, igm or igg serology and also of course you need to confirm it using mat eh, for leptospirosis so basically case definition Another important document is the clinical case definition by MOH 2017. Okay, I will show to you the picture. You can go through the a list of clinical case and also case definition of other infectious diseases that need to be reported by to the Ministry of Health. All right. So okay, we have here the definition of clinical case with the symptoms and also, of course, lepto. You need to uh, you need to focus on the history, eh? history of exposure to the water with the symptom. Okay, a probable is when you have the clinical clinical case uh, definition plus positive ELISA or other rapid test. Confirmed case is, of course, you need to confirm using MET. You can also confirm using PCR uh, and also culture. All right, so depending on what sample you take. Okay. So, uh, just now we are finished with zoonotic diseases. The prevention and control is almost the same. Uh, proper hygiene, uh, cleaning up, make sure there are no, make sure you do some pest control if you find out that your house is actually full of rodents. And of course, eh, if, you, if you get a symptom early, you need to go to the hospital early because it can be, it, uh, we can kill the organism by broad spectrum antibiotics, eh? for example, cephalosporin. Okay, so uh, now is, we want, I want to discuss with you regarding TB, okay, pulmonary tuberculosis, okay. This is just one of the picture that shows to you that uh, some of the students here uh, fall ill due to TB, eh? they found out that it is related to the ven vents, eh? ventilation, okay, ventilation, because uh, TB can be spread use, uh, through uh, droplets, eh? droplets. So therefore, any enclosed space is a risk of TB. Okay, simple as that. So uh, worldwide, compared to Malaysia, eh? uh, worldwide we can see that uh, the cases is around 8.7, around 10 million. 
and out of that uh, around two percent die eh? around about two percent out of the total number of cases die due to tb and most of them they found out that nowadays most of them are actually co-infected the deaths are due to and also the 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 infection is due to uh, is due to uh, co-infection with hiv okay undetected okay so when you have a person with tb you need to you also need to screen hiv oh, as well as vice versa if you have hiv and if you have hiv then you need to also to screen the if you have tb okay very important here because it is uh, it is found that the proportion of uh, the number of co-infection is slightly higher in in these groups okay uh, similarly the problem the, the now the problem is still in the asian and african region in asia actually especially in malaysia we found out that uh, the infections are mainly due to the influx of uh, workers eh? illegal workers that brings the tb before this uh, before this, uh, a lot of years ago, few years ago, we found out that uh, the number actually increases. Eh? Before that, we do not have the uh, the lot number of TB cases, but there's there's a surge in the TB. Eh? So that's why some of them even call TB a uh, re-emerging. Re-emerging here means re-emerging here means that. Uh, before this, we don't have the case, the case, uh, but it is happened outside, the, outside of the world, uh, outside of the country. But it happened again because of, of certain reason. For example, here, because of the uh, illegal immigrants that coming and not being screened properly and getting the infection into our country. So that's what that's that's why. Okay, so if you see this one, the estimated number of cases, a lot of cases in the African region as well as the Asian region. Okay, so, uh, but in comparison with developed countries, we are still considered developing. For developed countries, uh, they say that the downward trend is uh, due to the uh, better healthcare system there. But nowadays, uh, because of the increasing HIV, Okay, due to uh, due to sexual promiscuity, as well as other risk factors of TB uh, and also HIV, so they can see that the number of cases actually fluctuating eh, in even in developed countries. Okay, so very important here is that if you get TB, you need to screen for HIV, and we need to also monitor the CD4 count. Okay, because uh, we need to ensure that it is more than 200, okay, 200 CD4 counts uh, for us to have a better treatment towards TB. Okay, uh, something uh, very recent to you, to all of us here is the COVID-19. Uh, you remember that in December, uh, we found out that there is a, a new, a new, a new incidence of respiratory. Uh, pneumonia okay uh, they they thought it was SARS but it is not they thought it was MERS but it is not okay it is a new virus eh? uh, previously it's called NCOV eh? novel coronavirus now it's called COVID-19 okay just something relating to the COVID-19 uh, because it is a very it is a pandemic uh, very important for us to do prevention and control okay because you do not want uh further infection further cases and further deaths from this disease eh? so basically you can see that the incubation period is around 2 to 14 days but some also report up to 27 days eh? maximum okay infectious period is unclear but according to this study eh? this study is i think is being done in china they say that infectious period period of communicability okay just know that i've mentioned earlier it is it can be transmitted around two days before and seven days after the symptom okay so you have if you know the day when the when the day when the person uh, gets the infection you can trace back two days before he, uh, who does he or she comes into contact with 
okay, the family member, the friends. And after getting the symptoms, seven days, a, a week after getting, uh, having the symptoms, who does he or she comes, uh, comes across with, comes into contact with. Okay, so you can do contact tracing. You can subsequently isolate the sick and quarantine the exposed. All right. So the mode of transmission here is postulated initially. Eh, it was found. It was noted that uh, it is from animal to human. Eh, bats, bats to human, and some of the uh, mongoose to human. Some of the exotic animals. Uh, this is still uh, debatable. Eh? Okay, some say yes, some say not. Some say that. Uh, some say that it is from the lab. We do not know hundred percent. Eh? But it is confirmed that this transmission can, this infection can be transmitted to respiratory droplet. Uh, I think during our previous ERTL, we have discussed this, right? What's the difference between drop resp respiratory droplet and also droplet nuclei or airborne? So basically, the cutoff point is around, according to definition, 5 microns. Eh? Okay, anything, anything less than 5 microns is considered as can be. Uh, transmitted to a bond okay more than five usually uh, it can only spread through respiratory droplets okay not that far okay as opposed to a bond which can stay in the air but of course eh, there are a lot of factors also comes into play for example the ventilation all right uh, the wind speed okay uh, the temperature so on and so forth eh? uh, there's, there are a lot of studies here. Some, some contradict and some, uh, some follow this principle. Eh? Okay, so you also have heard of the R0, eh? basic reproduction number. Okay, for example, here in COVID-19, one person can actually infect around three other persons. All right, one person infected can infect around three or three percent eh, at maximum, but a comparison with measles, one person can infect around 18, eh? uh, 18 people. Okay, that's a lot, very infectious. Eh? Uh, so, but uh, luckily for measles, we have the vaccination. That's why vaccination is very important. Okay, so therefore, uh, COVID nineteen is not as bad as other uh, other types of not as bad or as other infections but because it spreads very fast and it is a new virus we do not know 100% uh, of the of the virus so therefore we need to the pandemic control is much more uh, scrutinized much more uh, much more uh, care need to be taken okay we cannot take lightly because it can can cause severe disease in elderly all right so that's why it is very it is very important, right? And most of them, most of the infection also is asymptomatic. So we, we do not know actually. So that's why it is better to be safe than sorry in terms of the COVID-19 prevention and control. Okay, so the COVID-19 principle is, uh, I like to use this one, eh? Wuhan, eh? the origin of the infection. W is for wash, hands, U, use correct face mask, H, don't go to affected or crowded areas. A, we advise people or advise ourselves to seek treatment if we are sick. And N, never, we never eat raw or partially cooked animal products because they have been reported, reports that COVID-19 is found in uh, four mice, COVID-19 is found in food, uh, even though we cannot confirm this 100%, but uh, we need to be very clear on this, that prevention control, we need do, doing more is better than doing less. Okay. All right. How about measles? Okay, measles. I think you have heard of this before during the previous, uh, during your previous uh, posting, especially in pedi pediatrics. You find we can find that actually measles. If you if you have the history of vaccination, completed vaccination, you can prevent the infection from happening, and you can prevent death from happening. The problem here is, of course, eh, anti-vax, all right? Anti-vax, this is the problem that we need to face now, all right? So this is what happens in uh, Kuala Lumpur or Asli, not that because of 
maybe not because of the anti-vax movement but because they do not have the insight uh, the awareness or the means okay the logistics to vaccinate their children all right because they are very uh, very uh, close or asli tribe eh? the batik tribe okay so out of uh, out of the 52 out of the to uh, 102 patients in june 2019 15 deaths okay that's around 10 to 15 percent of the cases died because of the measles all right they found out that the vaccination coverage here is actually low low less than 95 percent Okay, usually, if you want to achieve herd immunity, you want to protect yourself against this one, you need to have the area should have at least 95% of the population vaccinated, completed vaccination. Okay, for measles, of course, the first and second dose is, uh, the latest one is 9 months and 12 months. So, this, if, you com if your children, if your child completed these two doses, inshallah, you are protected. Okay. Uh, because the most important thing regarding measles is, as mentioned, as I mentioned in the R not just now, very infect, very infectious. Eh? It can spread 10% up to 13% eh? just now as in the infographic. Okay, worldwide also we can see that in Malaysia, uh, we can see that the cases, we can still see the number of cases uh, fluctuating uh, because of the vaccination coverage as I, as, I sh as I show to you the as I show you the graph here uh, the coverage of the MCB1 eh? MCB1 is the first dose of uh, first dose of measles vaccine okay MMR measles mumps rubella vaccine it is showing downward trend eh? from 2012 until 2015 eh? this is the time when uh, the issue of anti vax is quite hot eh? And then we can see that uh, because of this reduction, we can see that the cases uh, rise, eh? rise. So this is a worrying trend. So we need to advise the people to what is the, what, what, how, why is it important for us to vaccinate our children? Eh? Okay. So the concept of herd immunity, as I mentioned earlier, if adequate number uh, number of people vaccinate. 95% eh, uh, we can obtain the herd immunity so eventually the the pathogen will die off eh, if if let's say there's enough number of person vaccinated all right here okay sorry okay so similarly with other things is uh, the laws eh, laws for measles if you see the clause here uh, they we the nation government wants us to to yeah, mandatory for us to seek treatment and also to immunize and if you do, we do not do this we are actually uh, transgress or we do not follow we we are actually do not follow the law so that's very important for us to follow right? because there will be some enforcement or legal implication okay so this is just a picture uh, this is during uh, my attachment and the work that we 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 did in pejabat kesihatan daerah pekan there's an outbreak of measles in 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 pekan pahang eh? in kampung kalong okay kampung tanjung pekan uh, so we did sia eh? supplementary immunization activity we go house to house we vaccinate the children uh, there and then eh? on the spot Okay, for those who did not receive, all right. So in the hope that we break the chain of transmission. Okay. Retroviral disease HIV. Okay. The picture actually tells tells all. Eh? Basically, uh, the mode of transmission is previously it was uh, IBD, IBD use. Uh, now it's more to it's more to uh, homosexuals. Okay, LGBTs. So it is a risk factor of HIV now. Okay, we can also see the trend is still increasing. Uh, previously it was I IV use. Okay, now it is more to sexual. Eh? Sexual, uh, apart from the homosexual, of course, uh, the sex between males, uh, the the sexual activities, uh, the the prostitution also contribute to this. Eh? 
as well as those who are not screened with uh, HIV, the, uh, the, the HIV. So therefore, we can see that the trend of risk factor is going, uh, going differently as compared to previous years. Eh? Okay, so basically, the most important thing regarding HIV, we need to test as much as possible. Okay, test. The aim of our government is actually 90% of uh, population gets tested. Okay, 90% of at risk get tested and treated until the viral load is undetected. Okay, for example, uh, we uh, those person at risk, so we test uh, and then becomes HIV positive. So we need to we need to treat them with heart therapy and ensure that uh, the viral load becomes undetected and CD4 count remains above 200. Okay, so this is a very important concept. Test early, treat early. And then of course we have some more, uh, we have community program, for example, in com uh, in our Kulia medicine, we advocate gender dysphoria flagship according to SDG under Prof. Samsoul. So it is a very good move. We do not want a person to, uh, a person to engage in immoral activities. So we do have promotion, we encourage them, we empower them. Okay, we do not discriminate or stigmatize the situation, but we get get them together and give the correct uh, correct information regarding the prevention of HIV. Okay, so this requires intersectoral collaboration. So we need to collaborate, not just uh, inside the our health health uh, ecosystem, but also with other agencies. For example. Agency uh, anti dadah kebangsaan (AADK) uh, with permata uh, with the children and also with the uh, the family health uh, unit. Okay, the LPPKN. Uh, there are a lot of other NGOs. Eh? Uh, Nation AIDS Council. So it is actually a intersectoral collaboration if you want to control HIV in this country. Okay, so the loss almost the same. PCID 1988. Okay, uh, I want to show you the picture of this uh, case definition book. Okay, you can freely on uh, Google and get this uh, document. Okay, this document will list to you all of the important notifiable diseases. Okay, here we have around 45, 44 notifiable uh, diseases plus others eh? so these diseases are mandatory to be notified okay some of them are mandatory to be notified within 24 hours for example uh, dengue some just uh, you need just to notify within seven days okay for example syphilis okay seven days eh? within seven days and some also not be included inside the list eh? but sometimes the district health office wants you to notify for example, myeloidosis, okay, myeloidosis is notified administratively, okay, that it is not, it's not, it is not compulsory. So you have compulsory notification and administrative notification, as well as you have notificate notifiable within 24 hours, and you have notifiable uh, notifiable disease within seven days. So so you need to go through the document and you can check. What are the diseases that need to be notified early and what diseases that you need to be notified seven uh, within one week? Okay, early here means within 24 hours. I think okay, that's all. Thank you.